We are live with Jesse Berger and Nicholas, I should just say Nick Karadza, I'll stop. It's not Nicholas Alexander Karadza, it's Nick Karadza. Nick. 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 Nicholas Alexander. I, like I said, man, it sounds like royalty to me. I'm like, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll take it. Sir, Nick, Sir Nicholas. Yeah, Sir Nicholas. See, even better. They, they, Could it be Sir better. Jesse? Sir Jesse? No, nah, it's got to be Nicholas. Sorry, Jesse. My, like my, you, but... my pronouns are Mr. or... Uh... <laughs> warrior? <laughs> yeah, warrior. Sure. I told Jesse I like his I like his sweater. See his sweater? Clown world. Yeah. I like yeah. it too. I like it too. It's a, it. Uh, he represents it. He rep- Well, no, I don't mean he's a clown. I mean, it's a good sweater. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I actually get a lot of compliments on this sweater. When I wear it out public i'm very surprised that people who let's just say i would describe from all sides of sort of the political spectrum social cultural spectrum they've come up to me and they go oh i love your sweater and i'm like you know in my head i'm like i don't know if this represents to me what i think it represents That's to you, you yeah, but you don't know who you're dealing but, with. but it yeah. seems to resonate with everyone well i guess no matter what quote unquote side of arguments you're on these days and it feels like there's all everyone's arguing Everyone thinks it's clown world for, you know, whoever's on the other side, that they're the clowns, yes. you know? So, like, it doesn't matter what side you're on, so it just resonates. You're, so, basically, you're a bipartisan. You're kind of like, you're dead The clown dead world center. is a bipartisan. Yeah, it's a dead you know, center. Type everyone can gravitate and rally around it. I, we, we mentioned FTX. So, for those of you who are listening who don't know Jesse Berger, Jesse is the author of Magic Internet Money, a book about Bitcoin, which is an absolutely fantastic book, well put together. I really have to admit, just the way the bite-sized pieces make it really approachable. So, if you're new to the subject, fantastic book. And Jesse's been on here three or four times, including with Greg Foss and a bunch of other people. Your buddy, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on his name, Neil Whitaker, yeah. um, who's a great guy. And, he's a uh, character. He's a yeah. character. So, But today, I just need to tell you something. I just sat down with someone. I don't want to mention their name. They have a home in the Bahamas. Guess who's a neighbor on their street? Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam, what's his name? Sam Something Bankman. Freedman. Freedman. Yeah, yeah, ba- ba- bank run fraud. Ba- yeah, scam Sam, bank run fraud. Scam bank run fraud. Friedman um, is uh, is a neighbor uh, or, or lives on on the street in the Bahamas. Can you believe that? Unreal. And he said he was surprised more people aren't like on the street trying yeah. to, to to talk to this guy. He finally hired a, a defense attorney. I saw. Oh, did he? The same, I, I think I saw it on the same. It, it was Ghislaine Maxwell's defense yes. attorney. Yeah. No way. So he must know he's Honest, in re- is, real yeah. trouble. He must know he's in real trouble if that's it. Well, it feels like he's been on a PR tour. Like, I feel like his parents are both pretty high end Stanford professors who are lawyers, no? So, Do so I have that correct? I've, I've, yeah. I've read Something into like it. That. And, and, and I feel like they've intentionally put this guy on a PR tour where it's like, oh, it's not criminal negligence. There's no, it, this is a, a oh, young guy. Where he made a mistake. mistake yeah, yeah let's, you, let's, see, you, you see the New York Times and other, you know, publications, big name publications that are just lobbing softballs to the guy, right? And it's just like, he didn't just, oops, I accidentally lost $10 billion for, no, you literally were stole, you stole just taking client funds. They were coming in the front door and just straight out the back door and you were spending it or investing it, but you didn't actually keep it for your clients, which is the entire premise of the business you were running. Well, the best part about, it, I mean, there's lots of, I yeah. shouldn't say the best, there's lots of astonishing parts, Yeah, but, but the fact that people were going to the exchange and buying Bitcoin and they actually owned, the exchange themselves owned zero Bitcoin. If that's not criminal in itself, I, I, maybe, you know, maybe they had it at a time and, and they then sold they sold it. it. But at the, the time of the bankruptcy, they owned zero, right? Like that's It was zero or one. Or one. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a very nominal amount. <laughs> Like that's, that's just nuts. One of the biggest exchanges in the world, right? So Jesse, what do you think this does? So for the, for anyone listening who doesn't know, this was a, you know, a quote unquote crypto exchange, just saying the, the word always makes me crazy, but, yeah. but, um, that, uh, you know, was run inappropriately C- customer funds were used for their own gambling or investing. They lost it all. It all turned into what looks like, I guess, allegedly is a Ponzi and uh, funds are missing. I think there's some hedge funds that are out tens of millions of dollars. You know, this has ramifications for people's life savings all over the place. And the people like the New York Times are kind of giving softball, you know, articles around this saying the guy just made a mistake he's young let's kind of he means well he means well let's yeah. let him off keep the donations please going to different government officials but jesse in your mind what does this do to the state of the the, the this industry um and I, I like i definitely am a bitcoiner yeah um but but I guess in just in general when i say that what, what do you think this does yeah so crypto right the the I guess we call them maximalists, but the, the the real strong Bitcoin advocates who really understand the value proposition and the premise and the 
solution that Bitcoin, like the problem that Bitcoin solved, understand that this highlights Bitcoin. It, it showcases, hey, there is a reason you should hold your own money. You should verify that it's there and not trust some other entity, right? So it it's it's another example of, you know, we've had failed exchanges throughout the years in Bitcoin. It's a, just another one. It just happens to be the biggest example, the most high profile example. Um, I had personally in my life, I had a friend, I'll, I'll tell you guys a story, who, you know, very normal guy, I would say. He invested just a little bit into a whole bunch of different coins, um, nothing he couldn't afford. Um, you know, he works in real estate, actually. Um, oh, God. And so that's his primary, you know, business. But, you know, he dabbled in it. It was, it was again, nothing, nothing you couldn't afford to lose. Uh, bought some NFTs, bought some all kinds of other stuff. He bought ETH specifically to buy NFTs. And of course, when the market went down and then FTX went down, I spoke to him specifically after FTX went down. He goes to me, Jesse, I, you know, I, I get it now. I, I see it. Like, I, I took the stuff I had. I sold what I could. I sold everything. I just rolled it into Bitcoin and I, I have it in my wallet. And now I just, I buy. And he said to me, he's like, I buy X amount of dollars. He has a daily buy set up. And he just every week or every, you know, so often he rolls it into his wallet from the exchange that he uses. And then, and then the best part of this is that he goes, but Jesse, like, there's one thing. How do I get my friends to understand that all these other cryptos are nonsense? And I'm, I'm sitting there like, oh man, like this is, you're just, you know, this is my life. Like, you know, I've been trying to figure that out for years at this point. Yeah. I've been trying to figure that out for years, but for you, a person who is, again, hasn't spent a lot of time thinking about this stuff. It's not a primary concern of his, but for him to have that sort of light bulb moment where it goes off and FDX was the catalyst for it, like that's to me speaks volumes. So you think it's a good thing. It cleans out the system. It's like a brush fire, I guess. It cleans out the weak parts, the, the you know, what's left are the strong actors, perhaps. But yeah. I just feel like this is all going to happen again. I just feel like it's just like a, this never-ending loop of people looking for quick money and quick riches. But that's in every industry all the time. Yeah. Like look at what real happened estate, in real estate real the last estate's couple of years. Same. It's the real same thing. So that's going to happen in, in this industry. Yeah. It so whoever's changes. ready to hear the message, this helps them, like your yes. friend, helps them hear the message. That's right. There's there's always another sucker is sort yeah. of the yeah. name of the game, right? Yeah. The, the idea with Bitcoin is that Bitcoin is the last thing you need to own, the way, the way I think about it. I feel like... So oh. once once you're in, once, once you've... Re- and when I say in, I don't mean... I mean owning some, but also just custodying it mentally and like you've wrapped your head around the idea that like bitcoin is the thing i need um it's the last thing i'll need there's nowhere else to go after that you're not going to say okay so crypto ends you go to bitcoin but there's no bitcoin end Mm -hmm. if bitcoin ends we we got a whole world of trouble here Mm -hmm. um it's funny i'm gonna play devil's advocate on this just mm -hmm. because just sure because for some people listening right because the, the 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 one thing that people can't figure out is that okay i get it guys maybe maybe this thing's good but if adoption isn't there doesn't like happen if, if you don't believe that so if you're someone that's like okay i get it but i'm just not convinced the adoption's not going to happen or the, the governments are going to be able to sure. do something or whatever so i'm not going to go down that path right there is some sort of validity to that you know because because if you're doing it now thinking that this is you know that we're going to benefit you in the future then you feel that there's going to be some sort of adoption growth you would think mm-hmm. um or the benefit might not be there so that's a valid argument to people that are that are not or that are thinking that they might not get involved in this it would be valid if you're not looking at the data <laughs> i mean like i i think yeah i hear your point and but i what, appreciate you you're talking about up. the debt the debt like no the, no just look at lightning network usage Oh, yeah. It goes well, up and, every and, so, but and, I, but I think, and Jesse, I want I want your take on this. But the way I would frame it is that when a when a if we call this a monetary protocol or an open source, model, whatever we want to reference it, I think throughout history, if we look at economics, things go from like oh something becomes a store of value. Once it becomes a some sort of store of value, it can be considered to be used as a medium of exchange between more than two people. You know, it's more than firewood or milk or eggs. It's like oh this thing has a store of value. Maybe more than just us are going to see that and begin using it as a medium of exchange. And eventually, it becomes a unit of account. Mm-hmm. And when it becomes a pretty 
well-versed unit of account. It's like we've kind of holy hit the holy grail moment. But I think we're at the point where it's kind of proven that it's some sort of store of value because enough time has passed and it hasn't gone to zero. So there's some value there. Now we're at the yeah, point it's, of... It's, it, people are calling it dead at $17,000. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Like, exactly. You know, if, if, go back in time three years or four years and we'd be like, please, please, you know, $17,000 would be huge. huge from where we were. So we're at the point where it's evolving as a medium of exchange. And, 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 you know, I don't think it's universally accepted as a unit of account yet, but I would feel on that progression, we're at a medium, medium of exchange. So I, I would, and I think that's a valid point, Nick. I just think that when I just look at the amount of usage going on, on, on things like the lightning network that all of the analysts seem to just ignore, um, it, it seems to me that's just growing every month. I don't know, Jesse, what, what, what would you say to that? I mean, the way I look at it and the way I've described it, it's just the fundamentally most superior money we've had. But to, to understand what that means, you have to have a framework for understanding what makes fundamentally good money. Um, yes, adoption is there. It's growing. I give the example of my friend. We can look at there's a conference going on right now in Africa mm. where there's a lot of of action happening on that side, um, on that continent. Well, it's solving right? an immediate need. It's yeah. solving a need for them because it is useful. It is fundamentally sound, but also it's useful, right? That the properties of Bitcoin, you, we, we talked about the store value, but also the fact that just anyone can access it. Anyone can spend it. No one can stop them from doing that. That is very, very useful, especially when you're in a place that A, either is actively restricting you or B just doesn't have a lot of other infrastructure. Okay. You grab a cell phone and boom, you're up and running. Okay. So then let, let's take it one step further because we've seen that when the governments feel threatened, they will, I mean, Canada has been a, almost a leader in this, at least, we're, <laughs> at least we're leading in something, you know what I mean? But when the government, it's <laughs> a good way to say, yeah, it. yeah we yeah. are leading at shutting down people's bank accounts. Yeah. If we feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who else? And, and who calling, was, who was it recently that looked at Canada and, and did the same thing as a was, was oh, Brazil, um, Brazil, Brazil, Brazil right? yeah. 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 Oh, this Canada yeah. thing is a good set the bar. Yeah. So, but anyway, so, <laughs> so if, if the government, you know, so I understand what's going on in Africa. And the usage and, and because of like the inflation and the, the currency controls there and stuff like that, it, you know, the growth and, and the use and it's mm. good. But most people in North America don't have that context. Or if they did at one point, they forget it very quickly and they're very trusting in the government. And the last few years has been very eye-opening to, even to me where it's like yes. people look at the government, the government says something and they're like, okay, that must be factually true. There must be no other narrative and that's it. I'm not going to look for other information. So if people, so if, if that's, if we agree on that, and then the government comes out and says, hey, look, this thing is bad. We're blocking on ramps and off ramps to it. Then that doesn't that hinder adoption in a massive way to the point that most people aren't going to be like, well, hold on. If you're blocking this, there must be something to it. Most people are going to be like, oh, that's bad. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, it's it's partially the Streisand effect where it's like, don't look here. Don't look here. What do people do when yeah. you scream? Don't look here. Well, they're going to look there. Yeah, some will, but the majority won't. I mean, I mean, I, I just say the population of the last time I checked, the popula population of people in the quote unquote Western world who are using Western banking is about a billion. OK, the population of the world right now is like what, between seven and eight billion. Mm -hmm. So I would say we keep in North America discussing the importance of what America or America and Canada or the West does. And I feel when the globe has an open monetary network that serves 8 billion people, if 1 billion, the entirety of 1 billion say no, to me still, it's you're not stopping something that will emerge in a free market economy as the market good of choice to be used as money. And I feel that the rest of the world is in process of making that choice. Are we early? Absolutely. Am I making a bet early on that? Absolutely. Am I taking the funds I need to live and buy groceries tomorrow and putting it into Bitcoin? I'm actually hesitating because I think I would want to, but <laughs> but I'm not taking that immediate money, but pretty much a lot of the other stuff after a set threshold, I'm, I'm flushing into it because I think this isn't the good that the global market is going to rally around as the item to be used as money. Even if the West clamps down hard, if America clamps down hard, who cares? South America is going to stop using it because of that. And I'll tell you, when well, China's already done it. So there's another billion or more. Sure. And then if a couple other, but, big but countries, mining's mining's on the way back up in China. 
Oh yeah, that I didn't know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means somewhere in China, somebody the government's is, looking. Well, I'll, I'll give you this example. I mean, our family comes from a communist country. I think it was called light communism, Yugoslavia, but communist country. Or at least there was a dictator. Let's say that there was a dictator in there that dictated that you had to use the dinar as the currency. Now, when people wanted to store their value, what did they use? German marks. Mm -hmm. But it was in a country. Not a democracy, a country that dictated you had to use dinars. I know, but if you can't get your dinars into Bitcoin, because before you could, there was a black market to get it. And I guess through technology and firewalls and VPNs, they'll end up being this black market. It, but but that's, that's what I'm saying. The black market will off. move faster than yeah, the government. Yeah, because if I, they turn it off, the access to it, whereas the dinars, you can like you know, smuggle on a bag on your body from Germany over to Yugoslavia and then start selling them. You don't the think it's like easier to smuggle it digitally if you had to smuggle it around on a not USB? Smuggle, I'm talking, not smuggling it. I'm just talking about getting your money, exchanging it into Bitcoin. I think it's easier. I don't Before think so. you had to find our aunt in a, in a market <laughs> yeah, yeah. selling eggs but and the, under her skirt, she would pull out German market. Yeah, but look, look, <laughs> well, look when, there's these, when there's these protests and stuff in, in, in some countries, what they've done is they've just shut down Twitter. Right. They've just yeah. shut shut down like there's like you can't access this at all. They've shut down the Internet to certain things. So these protests in, in parts of the world. Are you, are you talking about place. like China where they got Apple to shut down the Bluetooth functionality? Yeah, or, I yeah. wasn't. Well, I mean, yeah, you can look at that. Too. But yeah. if you look at Iran and they've done it in Egypt way back mm -hmm. when they were doing it and they were shutting things down because they because uh, when there was the uh, what was it called? The Arab uprising at that time, you know, or, or like the, just the, uh, the Arab, Arab Spring. That's yeah. right. So there was all that stuff going on. So they just shut it down. They're like, no, like you're not going to be able to access this part of the the world wide web that's cut off to you and I, and I, I like i'm just again i'm playing no no and advocate, i appreciate it right? i like it i like because it. like i'm just like they can they've proven they can do that to an extent can they do it to 100 percent? no but if they do it to 95 it limits the amount of people that are going to be like i really got to work so then this. in that scenario jesse and i let's play the scenario where you're like you don't have any bitcoin jesse and i have some bitcoin okay um, but there's more of you than Jess, jesse and myself to me in that world i like it because i have what i would call wild money out free that I can do anything with. And you're stuck in a world where the government is going to CBDC you to death, tell you you can't buy stakes because your carbon footprint is so high. Whereas Jesse and I can interact directly between each other and who cares? So, the, so you're good interacting with the people that are left. So the, oh my gosh, the, the small minority of the population, whatever the percent that is, you just operate with absolutely. those people and you're good with it. They're, okay. they're, they're the people to me in the right. I don't want to live in a world where a government dictates what an economy uses as money. That's just a world that is like so centrally planned. It doesn't even represent a free market economy, never mind a free society. Yeah. Like it's so bad. And people are waking up to that, especially the last couple of years. They're starting to really clue into, again, you know, we're talking, we were talking just before we go on the air about rates being raised in Canada again today. That is. One action by a small group of people, right, a, a dozen people on the board or whatever, I don't it, that's in the U.S. rather, I don't know what it is exactly in Canada, but Tiff Macklin goes up and says, we're going to raise rates by 50%, uh, pardon me, by uh, 50 basis points today. That one I be, action... I wouldn't be surprised they did 50% just yeah, yeah. Actually, the way they've been doing point. it. That, yeah, that's yeah. actually their long-term We would take all your money. Yeah. That's, that's, we'll their, that's their long-term target for we're the rate. We're going to 50% of your money today and the other 50% tomorrow. <laughs> but one person making one decision impacts tens of millions of Canadians. That is centrally controlled economy. And they are specifically like they, they have said out loud, they want to induce a recession. Why would you want, want to punish your economy? That is not the point of an economy. The economy needs to not just grow. And again, growth, you know, in the uh, we'll call it the fiat sense of it. Growth entails just more dollars being created as opposed to looking at it from the perspective of more value, which are not the same thing, right? Value meaning goods, services, products, people being active. Yeah. And, and you know, our means are yeah, stronger and it produces more value. Prosperity, the quality of life, the quality of arts and culture, like that's all valuable. Whereas the, the sort of fiat system is, well, you know, GDP, G plus the X plus Y plus whatever the old, the, the formula, one of those G is government spending. So they could spend a, a trillion dollars and boom, we have a trillion dollar um, GDP. But are they going to spend it efficiently? Are they actually going to create value? No, they're not even doing that right now. They're trying to, t mm -hmm. to take it away and reduce it. It's so backwards, they're thinking, 
Yeah, but it just, it just I, boggles I my mind. But, if we, but I like what you're saying. So no, just, I'm, but I'm on Jesse. But if you bring it back to adoption, because I agree with yeah, all sure. that. Yeah, okay. Sorry, we got on Most tangent. people aren't looking at that. So if we're looking at adoption, there's like real headwinds in adoption because even what you said, see, cause okay, you so said then. like more people are looking at, at, at this now because of what's happened. I don't know how many more people are looking at like the, the, the money system or our, yeah. specifically the Canadian dollar and being like, wow, I really am like a little bit concerned okay. about this because of what the government did. I think we see mm. people in our, our small sure, circles, sure. but, but, but it's not own, representative. No, I don't think okay, so. Okay. So here, no, no, some, but, but it doesn't matter if it's, we're not going to get, you know, 90, a hundred percent of people to get Bitcoin and clue into it, right? It's, uh, I think it was a Corey Clipson who wrote the article about uh, the intransigent minority getting that, that the, you know, the sort of three and a half percent threshold or three percent of threshold of people who really get it. And once they get it, everyone kind of follows because there's, there's no other choice. It's, it's becomes mm -hmm. this default. Um, but to the point that you said, the connect, like some people do get it. Those small you know, groups of people in our circles, for, it starts with us and then they get it and we explain to them and it takes time and you know I have to beat the message into some people's heads over and over again and then eventually something happens they free the, the Canadians bank accounts and they come to me and they go okay I, I can understand why you see there's this value proposition for Bitcoin tell me more about it how do I use it how do I buy it how do I or how do I acquire it um, and then they get it and eventually they use it and then eventually again because it's a sticky idea once it gets in someone's head you know, there's no, there's nowhere else to go after that. This is the best option available. That message, once it resonates in them, okay, now they become sort of spreaders of that message. So, you know, you're, I, I think you're looking at it from the perspective of how do we get just everyone to get on board? Whereas it's not going to happen like that. It, it can't really happen like that. It's just slow, steady growth over an extended period of time, right? This is this is a long game we're playing, right? It's, you know, we're and not- the examples I would use is that if I looked at all my past trends that I look at, TCP IP beat out, beat out Novell Networks. Novell Networks was a closed network. TCP IP was the open network, it beat out. The internet architecture beat out client server, which was largely driven by Microsoft, but there were, were other companies, Power Builder comes to mind. Um, they, they built client server architecture but then the open architecture, if the internet made everything go thin client and that kind of beat out. So TCP IP beat out Novell, internet architecture beats out client server. Um, then you have Linux beating out companies like Sun Solaris was a huge company in the tech days, sold lots of Unix servers. They were a major, major player. They were instrumental in Java and the development of Java and JavaScript. I think, I can't remember how the rights to that went. Um, but then they got basically beat out by an open source Linux. And today, Linux is the dominant thing. So to me, I just feel like we have closed systems, the Canadian dollar, closed system, American dollar, even though it's quite global, closed system. You have you know, the Euro, closed system. Then you have a monetary network evolving that is open. And I just feel that it doesn't matter if we don't have the adoption or don't see it day by day, that the open network always gets better use cases. And to Jesse's point, the Bitcoin will just be the plumbing. And there'll be people like Jack Maulers and Strike who build apps on it. And over time, there'll be like the Fountain app where people are sending sats when they listen to a podcast. Like if you're listening to this podcast right now, you can send us sats and we can distribute it around them instantly. I think that will just evolve and usage will grow that way. And we'll wake up 10 years from now and be like, oh, wow, there's quite a lot more usage. And Bitcoin might just be the plumbing that's never really discussed. Yeah, that's uh, so, and that's something that's not taken into account in the counter arguments that I was making because once you go down that path if you send sats or you receive something or you do something via bitcoin or you use the lightning network then you go back to the traditional system yeah. you're just like what is this, this? sucks yeah. right it's funny i today uh, for the first time i got a request from someone they're like yeah can you you know you can pay me this way or i'd actually prefer can you just send me some bitcoin and they're like here just use shake pay they, they used Sh said shake pay and um their whatever, username or whatever something? well it's no just whatever other other app he's like it only takes 10 minutes to set up so he was asking because no I, way I guess he's asking people to start sending him money that way um and i'm like yeah no i got shake pay I'll, no no problem just send me the wallet address so it actually made me like it was that was this morning a couple hours ago it made me happy i was like oh my god i like you even more now that's cool. you know what I, mean? <laughs> like, I, I i had my uh my moment with lightning uh, um, probably about a year ago or so when I, I hadn't actually used it up until then. Um, but I hired a guy to do 
uh, a video editing gig for me, just like a small sort of promo thing he put together for me. He was in Romania. I literally, I posted on Twitter. I'm like, hey, I'm looking for someone to help me out with something. He replied. I have no idea what his name is. I, I forget exactly what country he is. I know he was in Eastern Europe. Um, Way to just lump everyone together. Sorry, I'm not trying to. Uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it was Romania. <laughs> anyway, um, I hadn't had a Bitcoin wallet set up. And I, sa- I said, obviously, you know, I'll pay him Bitcoin. He says, oh, why don't you pay me in Lightning? I said, oh, I, you know, I haven't had it set up yet. He's like, dude, you wrote a book. Like, get, get on this. Like, yeah. just get a Lightning wallet. It's not hard. I'm like, okay, fine. You know what? This is the impetus. Um, so literally... After he does the job, I on a Saturday night at like 11 o'clock, I'm messaging him. I'm going, okay, thanks for this. This is exactly what I want. Da, 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 da. Um, I get, how do I, you know, do you send me an invoice? What do I do? He's like, yep, here, send me an invoice. Oh, here's your invoice. Uh, just plug this in and pay me. And so we're literally on live chatting online. Invoice received one second, punch it in the blue wallet, hit send. I hit send and two seconds later, he's like received. And I'm like, that, that's amazing. It, it, that You're, is mind blowing. Yeah. The banks are closed. You know, like it's a weekend. No, if no I, fees or are there? And, a small, and, a small and I didn't fees. send him a lot of money, right? I, I I sent him like the equivalent of seventy five bucks, basically. And it was, you know, if I tried to wire it, a bank wire minimum would, would have cost like that much. Fifty bucks. Yeah, it would yeah, have yeah. cost as much as as I was sending. But no, I sent it off hours. Doesn't matter weekend holiday, whatever, and it arrived. Boom, snap of a finger yeah. instantly. Well, strike just it's that's, those moments. It's those moments that really change your thinking and, on a lot of this. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. And I've sent, obviously, on chain transactions and I understand how that works. And it's like, okay, you wait and you're sort of making sure it confirms. It leaves one wall. You're yeah, peeing and hawing. Okay. I hope I didn't screw up and put a bunch in the wrong address. There's a, that, the, the chain, the, the, the grocery chain in South Africa, right? South Africa yep. that's using it. And there, there's been adoption. You see it. It seems like there's some problems with it because some of the invoices are taking it, yeah, a little it's long. Yeah, still in, in infancy. No, it's normal. Yeah. But I mean, you're, you're seeing it, and it's just like it is. Once you, it's strange. Like the the the, the plumbing of that open monetary network system, protocol network, yeah. whatever you want to call it, right? The plumbing of that every day to to, to how not how that doesn't become a thing. Like I, how that doesn't take off because I just don't understand. Like what it's very hard for people once they use it to go to be like to go back to the regular thing and be like, this is this is not like not substantially worse than what I just did. totally and and actually coming back a little bit that we were talking about sort of crypto and how the, the FTX thing exposes a lot of crypto. One of the big arguments about a lot of other coins are, oh, well, Bitcoin is slow. You know, this one is so much faster. This the the confirmation time is 30 seconds or 10 seconds or whatever, you know, what have you. OK, well, now we have lightning. We send Bitcoin instantly. We just destroyed, you know, ninety percent or ninety-five percent of the supposed value propositions of all these other cryptos. It is weird mm-hmm. that because we've talked about this a, a few times. Where why is there not coverage of light? Like, there's very little coverage of lightning. lightning. A lot of people that follow call it the, the crypto space. Which, which one good thing is that there, I'm to, there's more and more people that I've spoken to, and it's not this huge amount, but there, it, it's a growing number that will dif- differentiate between crypto and Bitcoin which at least is a, as a start, but I don't understand with a lot of these, you know, these reports and things like that on the quote unquote crypto space. I even hate using that word like you, they don't talk about lightning. And I'm like, I guess is there a vested interest to build up these other tokens? So they're cashing out of these. They're, things, they're right? still I, trying to understand. They're still trying to figure out Bitcoin, right? So, I mean, lightning is a whole other literal layer, you know, how can we expect them to wrap their heads around Lightning when they haven't figured out Bitcoin? Because if they really understood Bitcoin, they would realize it. But or, just again, if, or, if you're yeah. just looking at the growth number, the user numbers alone, like a very simple stat, you should be talking about it. Yeah. And, yeah. and then and any one of them that does, they'll discount and say, well, it's still small compared to some of the other, you know, crypto stuff. But if you look at the growth on it, and I think what's really misleading when you look at the Lightning Network, for anyone listening who doesn't understand what that is, it's just another kind of layer on top of Bitcoin where a lot of transactions can happen. The usage is very deceiving because it's like having a bar tab. So you could charge a hundred things to that bar tab and only at the end of the night will that get posted to kind of, let's call it the main chain or, you know, closed out or whatever you want to say. So it might look like one transaction the way I understand the architecture right now on the Bitcoin network. But on top of that one transaction, there might have been 100 different transactions happening. So when people report on Bitcoin usage, some of the hedge fund guys, I'm always baffled because they're like, well, the usage is growing faster in other areas. I'm like, you aren't taking into account perhaps thousands of hundreds of thousands, millions of transactions already happening on the Lightning Network that only get represented on the Bitcoin layer 
maybe not for days and days and days. And when they do, it shows up maybe as like one settlement transaction. Yeah. And it, not, it doesn't have to be a huge amount either because could be a tiny amount no, because yeah, can those be transactions amounts. can be small. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Yeah. So I was talking I, I, the, the usage in the Lightning Network, which isn't talked about yeah, anywhere. But, yeah, but yeah, I get. But I, but they'll look at the Bitcoin usage and just you're right, dismiss it. And I'm like, are you not not you? You could have Lightning. You like the two users that were involved in Jesse's transaction. Where are they reported? If you just look at the main chain, what's going on there? You won't even see that transaction. Yeah, it's not going to be especially if they keep the money in the Lightning their Lightning wallets. It's just going to yeah, and that's another thing about Lightning is sort of once you, you know. Um, post from the main chain to lightning so you sort of convert if you want to think about it your btc to sats which is just you know denominating in bigger denomination dollars versus cents if you want to think about it that way um you kind of just keep using it so i'll send you know to different people for different products or services or what have you and then maybe i'll start receiving some for different things if i sell books here or there you know people often pay me in lightning if i go to meetups and i sell books and so it just becomes this very, it's it's like cash in the wallet. I'm just kind of, money yeah. comes in, money comes out. I'm not accumulating. The accumulation comes from, you have your job, you have your whatever, your savings, whatever. Um, but just very transactional, low level, nothing too major. It's not, you know, I'm not going to buy a house with sats on Lightning. Um, I'm not going to buy a house in Canada with Bitcoin right now anyway. But point being... It's it's very smooth. It's Jesse, very come on, easy. Help it's us like, out. Yeah, we have some property yeah, that you can buy. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Listen, when are you going to buy some property? Are, are you willing to take a, a pretty big discount on the, the price of a uh, real it's estate? Up to the seller. Yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. A, yeah, you're just we're the just man. The broker. We're, oh, the middleman. We're, we're the classic fiat business. What do you, we are the broker. You are Jesse. you are a rent seeking middleman. We are a very important you, part of the yeah, fiat yeah, system. Yeah. Okay. Jesse can't even, that's the hardest he's laughed since he's ever been here. <laughs> Just laughing. Listen, okay, we play yeah. a very vital role. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. In the economy. <laughs> I was talking to John Vallis and we were kind of just joking about, you know, just real estate and stuff. And 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 part of the, um, when you manipulate uh, an economy with a, a, a kind of a centrally planned money, you people get defensive with their money because they don't know what to do and they put it in things that then become monetized. Maybe it's art, maybe it's real estate. And, and you know, it's funny because before Bitcoin, this business was the only business we could figure out on really how to um, benefit from this old fiat system. It was like, hey, we're buying real estate. It's working. Yeah. We're able to stay ahead of inflation rate and stuff. And it evolved into you know, creating a brokerage, which we even hated the industry, Jesse, never wanted to have a brokerage. I, I, I know, we've but had, yeah, the, yeah, I remember just, this conversation. But this business, yep. if you really look at it, the productive capacity of Nick, myself, the we were very fortunate, we have an amazing team around us. If they were put to use in a different capacity, like, you know, making better energy efficient, making better education, and, and working in an economy that was around that, it would be much better use of all of our brain power, but instead the financialization of the world, if you just look at Bay Street in Canada, yeah. how many of the brightest minds in this country are working in areas, Nick, some of your friends that are working in financial products, that's really just what? When people earn money, they have to find a way to invest it so it doesn't lose value against inflation. And we have some of the brightest minds yes. in the country chasing their tails in circles in an industry that should barely even exist. We have a highly financialized economy and, you know, I haven't put down any formal thoughts on paper about this. I, I've talked about it just a little bit sometimes with, with friends or I guess I meet up you're, you're starting to get your serious voice on. Yeah, here. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but no, you, you hit on an important point. We're wasting, you know, it's opportunity cost, right? It's economics 101. The engineer could be spending his time creating some financialized product that, you know, he gets a cut of because he's a rent-seeking middleman too in this case, instead of building a bridge or yeah. helping construct a, a you know beautiful piece of architecture or something that's going to enrich lives. Somebody on our ways. team here is an aerospace engineer. And he's working in real estate. Like that that's fiat malinvestment, misallocation of resources, you know, personified. It's, I don't know where this, this takes us and, and, and where it ends, but here's back to Nick's point. Cause I, I like when Nick brings this stuff up. Cause it just makes me think oh, here, I, before. I, okay. Oh, I, I, did, I was, no, was going to add to the point. No, but no, you, okay. No. I didn't want to interrupt your thought. Okay. Um, because here's, here's the, the one other thing that was coming to mind with that. So I understand, you know, the technology side of it is like to me, the sales pitch almost, but the, on the government side, when usage increases, 
then their feet, like they're going to, the threat, the threat mm-hmm. of the tax revenue mm-hmm. because it's so bloated to your point, Jesse, yep. it's, it's, it, you know, it, 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 there's so many ways the, the funds that are wasted in this country are there. It's an absolute joke. Like I, I remember 20 years ago when I was working in a municipal government, I couldn't believe at that age, I, I even saw just the way things worked. I couldn't believe how much, um, overspending there was on stuff, how inefficient things were. Like it blew, it, it stuck with me for my whole life. Like very quickly I saw that it blew my mind. I've always been a person. I kind of like efficiency. I like figuring out the system, you know, I'm kind of looking for kind of not maybe not yeah, shortcuts. You're, you're a hacker. Efficient. You're trying to hack. I'm always trying to figure things yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. So I would look at the way things were being done and it just blew, like it baffled my brain immediately. And that was a, as a early twenties kid. You know, it didn't take me to being 50 years old and looking around the world. And so I can only imagine what it's like now. And you see some of the numbers being shared, like about like these studies they do. And I'll still never forget. I think we spend about 460 or $480,000 on the Ontario cannabis store logo. Oh, that's and, and right. Do you remember that? I, Did you I, I don't remember that. Oh, you got to love that. That, that actually, that actually sounds like they understand yeah. <laughs> compared to what they would. They the could have gone. They could have Fiverr. Fiverr could have done it. Yeah, Fiverr could have done it. The, the logo is just like two letters or something. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's like an O C B all it's, intertwined. Like it's it's literally like a grade five class. My, my graphic, yeah. my book, my gr- the my book cover cost far less than that. Yeah, it blew. Like I, that's the type of thing that just blows my mind. So they're going to see that, and it's a threat to all of them. And then, so I interrupted your thoughts. I don't know if that it goes exactly. Exactly with that thought, because I was thinking, okay, Nick's right. Like this threat is going to increase. And even if it's very, very minimal, like I'm, I'm making the threat sound like it's huge right now. Let's let's be realistic. I guess <laughs> with the usage, we might all get a cheerleading it, but maybe it's still, you know, relatively small threat. But as it increases, I think they can delay this, but I also think it's inevitable, not because it's an open network, but if I take the other side of the argument, the fiat system is so indebted that this blows up at some point and it might not even be in my entire lifetime, but I feel like it's a, it's a, it's, you know, it's a grain in sand in time almost that the next 50 years, 80 years, five years, three years, somewhere between now and some point of, I, I would, I got to think it's in my lifetime. The fiat system blows up. Okay. Well, so, well sorry. Uh, just no, no. Yeah. So, you go ahead and then I got one more for you guys. Sort of more addressing what you were saying, Nick. Um, let's say, and this, at this point, doesn't even sound that far out of the question. Trudeau gets threatened by Bitcoin, feels threatened. Pardon me, not. I think is he wakes up. But he he he's got such a problem with his own ego that he feels threatened every day about something. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. No. Every. You know. I don't. I don't even want to start talking about him right now because I'll just lose it. <laughs> um, um, no, but he you know goes on the attack, decides he's going to attack Bitcoin for whatever reason, try to overregulate it, try to clamp down on it. You know, we've heard the point. Maybe that Bitcoin is expensive to tyranny in the sense that it is very hard to physically locate and track down. You may be able to track it digitally to some degree, but it is still for the individual a very defensible position. So, okay, you physically come and compromise me. There are ways that I can still ensure that even if I am compromised, even if I give you the key that I know about, it will still be very difficult for you to access my Bitcoin. But B, and more importantly, it makes capital mobile, right? So, okay, I see regulation coming down the pipeline that feels very threatening to me. Well, if I want to pick up and go with my wealth, if the majority of my wealth is stored in Bitcoin, it's very easy for me to do so. Whereas if the majority of your wealth, (laughs) sorry guys, is parked in real estate, you can't exactly pick that up and walk across a border or fly a plane and go to El Salvador or go to but Mexico then, or then what have to you. To Nick's point, that is more of the threat. That you that, would take it up and go. Yes. No, but the threat to the government and their reaction to it is what I'm saying. Right, but they can't stop that. Or it's very, very, very difficult, difficult to stop. And that's the whole point, is that, and what, and it, once, is that it is expensive to tyranny. Yeah. I wonder mm-hmm. if they can, um, because if you, you know, not now, but in the future, um, if they could, because they would look at you and they would just say, okay, well, we know that you put on this, you bought through this exchange that's regulated at this point in time. Right now, it's, I, I don't think they, they you know, they, they ask where it's going and what the wallet is, but they track it. They're like, oh, okay, well, you transfer this stuff here. We're just going to do a deemed disposition of this like we are with your other assets when you're leaving and you're going to pay this much or you're not going anywhere. Right. And I don't know because your passwords, we know like the passwords are going to go digital. That gets shut down. You're not going anywhere unless you're swimming. Um, yeah, that's a whole you know, other story so, for but, sure. But that's, yeah, that's, so here's what I was, I was going to say about the adoption thing. 
Now, did you see the video that I sent you yesterday about that? It was, it was from Pierre Paglia. I did. Uh, yeah, yeah. But explaining quantitative easing. Quantitative easing. That was a great explanation. And it was, it was a great, right? There's no so, way he can stay this good if he becomes prime minister. No, that, I have no hope yeah. of any politicians. I, I, so he I, changes I agree. his tune for sure. Yeah, that is, I don't know him personally, so I apologize if he takes that as an insult, but I'm just suspicious. Yeah, the way he, <laughs> the way he outlined that. It, it was forget, very good for was, a politician. I don't know if you saw that video. Or I, I saw the beginning of it, and I actually thought, you know, this kind of sounds a little bit, I, I write these threads now. When the Bank of Canada does threads, threads talking about here's how quantitative easing works or here's how interest rates or some such thing work. I read it and I go, this sounds like gibberish. They're obviously lying because I understand what they're trying to tell you. And so I sort of quote, you've, them yeah, you've and, done a good job breaking and, them down. And sort of make, you know, I break down their double speak. Anyway, I heard his, the beginning of his speech and he had the line, he goes, oh, they, they didn't, uh, technically lied, they figuratively lied or something like that. And I was like, that's, I literally used that word, for, oh, that you? line four yeah, months yeah. ago. So he's reading I wonder stuff. if he saw he's my thread. I wonder. I wonder. Yeah. But uh, he's got a burner account. He's got <laughs> yeah. a burner account. But I do agree with you. I, I, anyone that talks a big game, it's very hard for them to keep that once they're in power. And there's a lot of forces. He know, even called out Toronto. Power. Was that speech done in Toronto? Yeah. Empire. Well, yeah. He even called out. He even in that speech when he was talking about how bad quantitative easing is for the Canadian economy, he even called out, he said, people in Toronto and the next line was something along the lines of don't believe this or might not think this. He was attacking yeah. pretty powerful financial players in Toronto. Yeah. And I'm like, who is this guy? Like, well, can he like, do that and get elected? I, 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 so I don't know that. But let's so I'm, I'm using him as an example. He needs Toronto to get elected. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah our system. But, but, but maybe yeah, he's going for the millennial vote. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so you have someone that understands the way money like yeah. that. It's, it's not. You know, it will, it will openly speak. Not that other ones don't understand. Maybe they do. He clearly don't. understands. But he understands yeah. and he'll openly speak about it. So understands the system. So let's say you, you have someone like that. I'm not saying he's a, a pro Bitcoin person or anything like that. I don't want to go there. But if you have someone that understands the money and that will help people understand that, does can that ever, do you think that can ever help further adoption? Or when that person ever gets in power, does is the force are the forces just too great That's that are the, going to change a thing because i don't think that will ever happen like i don't think anything to help adoption other than mistakes being made like freezing truckers bank accounts and that type of stuff will ever ever come from the top you know i'm just wondering like is that what anything's possible but you know what percent chance do you put on that because that changes things and i just don't i don't see that as a as a feasible you know uh, something coming to reality could, could he not say, let, okay, so let's say this guy gets into power. And it doesn't even have to be him. Like we can talk hype. No, but anyway, any anyway, politician right, yeah, who understands yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. If all he did was say, you can also legally use Bitcoin as a medium of exchange and you're not going to be taxed every time you use it. Because, you know, today, if you use an asset and it changes in value, it's capital gains yeah. and all this nonsense. How can they do that? The revenue loss but, is huge. But, no, but, but I guess what you would say is, but... We're recording in fiat equivalent. I'm just trying to, I'm just spitballing yeah, yeah, here. Okay, okay. We're recording in current fiat equivalent of that transaction. And your business has to pay us fiat equivalent in taxes or Bitcoin. Or Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. No, that defeats the purpose of money, right? That's agreed. But yeah, it's okay. one way to begin introducing it into a country with having two systems play alongside. The government begins to collect Bitcoin begins to use it as a as a medium of exchange and now a unit of account i don't and and it, um, and the fiat system doesn't it's not like a snap of the fingers where it's dead i i don't see bitcoin as something that's conducive for a large entity like government to collect it right like if, if we say okay the government has a bitcoin account well who holds the keys you know, who, how are we going to set that but up? Let's just, let's just assume it's fine. And we, and we have a, the 10 greatest people all sharing. That right. Well, you know, assumption is the mother of all, you know. Yeah. You know but, but let's let's remove um, that as an argument. I mean, it's still immoral for them to take a piece of the pie every time you're right. Every time you buy something. Well, it is, anyway. it is and it isn't. It depends because I guess because I that's one thing that I, I kind of, you know. No, we we have a lot. We're given a lot in this country. A lot of people come here from other countries and they they, they come here because there's a lot going on and we're given a lot. So I think we I think paying taxes is OK. Like, I think we should contribute. No, I, to the infrastructure. Don't don't get me wrong. It's not I'm 100 percent against taxes. It's how and when they're collected. OK. And if I'm. If I go um, buy a sandwich in Bitcoin and pay $10 worth of Bitcoin for a sandwich, 
somewhat, I'm, I'm having an equal exchange of value, right? Mm -hmm. I am giving the, the, the sandwich maker value in the form of money, in the form of Bitcoin, and they're giving me food. Sure. It's a fair trade. I don't yeah. need a third party in between saying, okay, give me 30% of that or 13% of so that. So where, you know, that's a good point. I can see that. So yeah. where does the government, because I want hospitals. I want my, you know, like I, I like of roads. Course. I like roads and a police. Oh, don't, and a, you're not going to do and, the and, roads and, thing, are you? Well, a judicial you, system. Let's you, go to, you know, let's you go. You know they uh, had roads before the income tax. Well, let's go, go to, right? I like a judicial system <laughs> yeah. where property at some point yes. can be ruled on in some capacity. Otherwise, yeah, con con my, consumption tax. So you think a certain, consumption tax, but that's what you were there, just describing. There are ways. I mean, I haven't gone down and, and no, we're, read we're a lot about this in a long time. Just all yet. I guess. Sorry, it's income that is problematic for taxing. That's the one where it's more of a free trade. I guess a sandwich, bleh, maybe, kind of. I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I, gonna I don't need tax. Go we even right. need we're, to write an article on. I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need to do because we need put, we need, put some. We need because to Nick's point, I agree. Like, okay, so. I, you know, I, I like the economic argument of like, um, there's, a, there's an economist from a long time ago that's used in economics or in Austrian economics as an example saying, how yeah. do the, how do Parisians get fed? There's no central planning, but food magically shows up in the right squares and the right bakeries and mm -hmm. everybody gets the food and there's no central planning. It all just yeah. kind of happens. So to your point about roads, I get it, yeah. but there is some value to me in a judicial system, a police force, and that, and a firefighting force, and perhaps some hospitals, not some, like not perhaps, a hospital system. But a, I lot, like but a lot of these are just services that can Correct. be privately run. Yeah. And they can give charity, right? Like people are giving people, if they have what to give and they're actively, you know, if I'm actively, again, if, if I'm making sandwiches, mm -hmm. most of the customers, 98% of the customers come through the door pay, but then someone comes in and he just doesn't have anything, right? I can say, you know what? And I can see I, that. I can and, see and that. that but, but, that, but that's actually been the case in different periods in, in history where we had far less taxes, where people were just no, more agreed. giving because they but had more how do more we giving. bridge? I agree. Yeah, no, how I, do we I, get there? I don't know. And I that's where I'm saying, if to back to Nick's point of if a prime minister comes in, maybe you have to have what El Salvador is doing and saying Bitcoin is legal tender. Um, but it's out there with our other legal tender for some point of time, because you're right. If you have a monetary base and a form of money that goes up in value over time, then if you're running a hospital, the, you, you might earn enough from that hospital to be very char charitable. But if you're, if you're running a hospital in a fiat-based system where the money that you earn goes down in value, it's hard to be charitable. Well, we're talking about being efficient, right? If we, if we ran in a, in a world where we were just far more efficient, there would be more room forgiving, right? True. There, yep. Right. We're, we're thinking in the context of the services we have now where everything's constricted and tight and there's not enough for the, you know, the, but I'm the talking about the there. bridge. No, no, the bridge, you know, it's, it's going to be that's, messy. That's not, it's going to be messy. There's no, I don't think there's any real way around that. And, and a place like El Salvador is a very different story. Whereas in Canada, right, whether it's Pierre or someone else who ultimately comes in, if they understand money and they want to try to bridge the gap, they're in this sort of dual position where, okay, they want to bring in the new thing, but they have to because Canada controls its own currency and it's a, you know so widely used. They have to maintain it to some degree. So, okay, so go to Where, whereas in El Salvador, they, they didn't control the dollar, right? That, their only currency was the dollar. They didn't have their own currency. It blew up however many you know decades ago. Yeah. So they just had the US dollar. They were at the mercy of a different country anyway. So being at the mercy of Bitcoin, it's just, a new, it's just okay, another so alternative. Okay, the bridge is a flat tax. It's a flat tax, a percentage based on what you earn. A flat tax to every Canadian, everything out the window, no consumption tax, and it's a flat tax on, on what you uh, earn. I don't, I don't As a bridge, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying, we could argue about like if this is a libertarian answer or not. I'm just talking about a bridge. I, I'm just saying, let's get to some place where Bitcoin is used, but how do we go from is, here to there? Is, is the bridge... is. Uh, if because no, no. we don't talk about this, yeah. it's going to be, and if this evolves the way we up. think, it's going to be chaotic. Yeah, is is the bridge not? Maybe the bridge has nothing to do with tax. Maybe it's a change in behavior. What I mean by that is, Jesse, I agree with you about tax. Like uh, we pay for, like we pay tax. We pay way more tax. Like yeah. when you pay step, too much tax. Yeah, like you pay a income, tax. consumption, invest, literally, every, gains. literally yeah. every yeah. transaction. Yeah, it's like every step you take on the sidewalk is it just it's like you hear ching, ching energy. Ching. Like it's just, <laughs> yeah. it's, just yes. it's nuts, right? Yeah. So, so I agree with that. But is but I'm okay paying you know uh, you know my, my yeah, fair share your like, fair share yeah. but is the pro like to me the problem is this the 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 deficit spending system of the government 
So, you know, because they just keep making more and, and there's no decisions have to be made. Efficiency's out the window a long time. Like, I mean, you can't even, on a scale of one to a hundred, it, 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 it doesn't even, it doesn't even compute as a zero. Like the yeah. efficiency is so low. So does that have to change where the government starts changing? Say, hey, look, we, there's hard decisions to be made. And I know this is politically God, they want to do it. But that's the yeah. thing. But, yeah, but we, have to, we have to decide where we're spending our money. Yeah. This is the income. This is our spending. And then we spend that. And then it's like, okay, guys, we need more money for this, this, or this. Everyone's got to pay more. Like, like the, it, You're right. Because as long as they can spend more than they take in, the, and this is the problem with the whole system. It, 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 so you're making me destroyed. think it's going to be chaotic and transition. So, but, but it'll so just never happen. Yeah. We're flip, screwed. The flip side of, you know, they can spend more than they take in, which obviously they do and they have for a long time and they're going to continue to do because they're sort of boxing themselves in what they need to deficit spend to keep perpetuate all the systems they have in place is that is the thing that drives the value to Bitcoin. So that makes Bitcoin bigger. That makes, you know, okay, yes, that makes guys like us maybe a target per se. Um, but it also... As, as Bitcoin grows and as the more people understand it, it's not just you and me. There are politicians who get it and regulators who get it, and maybe they're using it, and their incentive starts to change, That's too. That's true. The politicians where, themselves are using because, it. Because, you know, I'll, you know, I can say, I, you know, I know for a fact there are politicians that have bought, owned, store Bitcoin on a private wallet. Oh, shit, Jesse. And... Don't uh, you know, no name, name, name. No, name. No, name. no, 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 you have to name it. You're not leaving here until yeah, you name no, it. That's not going to happen. No, but have you see my brother. He's not going to let you. Leave. Yeah. 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 Um, but that happens. <laughs> and so there, you know, and we saw Pierre did his shawarma purchase, right? With yeah. Ali from Tahini's. Yeah. So, okay. You know, maybe he has, he only has $20 worth of Bitcoin. He doesn't have a whole stash, but he's, in, you know, there yeah. are people who have it for sure. And so what's their incentive? And the more, again, you have more regulators. It's like the system that you talk about as being this gargantuan, the people holding it up, their support is slowly fading away in the process mm -hmm. of. Yeah. yeah. And as an older generation, this is going to sound brutal, but I, I forget what the average age, Nick, of the U.S. Senate is. I saw it. It's, like, <laughs> it's something like it might be 80 I, or it's I, like I, 70. It, it's, and, yeah. and so as, as some of these people pass away and a new generation comes in, it might go from Changes where, it. It, and it, that might be sudden. It might go from like nothing, nothing, nothing is changing to like, boom, a lot of change happens in 12 months. You know, I don't, I mean, I don't look at it as an age thing though. It's, I mean, obviously the politicians that have been around for decades and decades, they don't get anything. Forget Bitcoin. <laughs> they just don't get anything. Um, because there are young people who are incentivized are kind of taken not in yeah. by, yeah. You know. So basically what we've concluded so yeah, far is that the transi the the transition to any sort of Bitcoin usage in a widespread way is going to be a very chaotic, bumpy transition. And the medium of ex as it gets as it gets picking up as a medium of exchange, we don't know how hard the government is going to come in and try to thwart that. We don't. So it's, basically it's, it's going to be some It's an interesting future ahead because there's government headwinds and chaos. <laughs> And so it's on the it's on the people using it to proactively yeah. defend it in certain ways, right? Whether that's maybe you're acquiring Bitcoin in non KYC ways, or maybe you're you know again you're you're using certain multi sigs, whatever it may be, multi signature schemes to protect it. I, I think it'll be like the fall of Rome, like when Rome fell, the last emperor was taken out and imprisoned, or you know tortured or whatever, and you know the 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 Romans left to go become, you know, serfs in a feudal system to farm the land because the taxes were so high in Rome that they just didn't work anymore. The inflation was so much. And it goes from existing, existing, existing to the last day, the last emperor is literally taken out and, you know, dismissed in a brutal fashion. So I just feel like we're there. Like it's going, it's working, it's working, it's working. And then one day everybody just yeah. has that eye-opening moment where like, wow, that was over five years ago, but it just yeah, took us now. Yeah. And maybe that window's 50 years and not five. Yeah. Did, uh, before we started, I didn't, I, I just seen the top point there on that, that piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. It, it, barbecue. Yeah. yeah. Barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you want, did yeah. you want, sorry, to I think sure. we we're going to talk about that. No. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's get to point number two. Yeah. No, no. We point can talk, two. We, we can talk about it a little bit. So, um, <laughs> you guys obviously know, but for the listeners, uh, I wrote an article March of 2021 titled risk it for the brisket, the barbecue rebellion and the great reject. It was an article about uh, Adamson Barbecue, which was a restaurant in Toronto, who uh, decided to defy lockdowns in fall of 2020 because he said to himself, this is pointless. 
And I understand that it's not actually, there's no scientific merit behind this. And we won't dive into all of it, but by now I would think people have probably come around to the idea that lockdowns I, maybe didn't help so much. Yeah, and to be clear, there, there was science at that time, because some people are like, well, that's easy to say now. But at that time, no, no, there, no. Was, there was science available and he was, it wasn't just this guy making a, a random decision. As, as yeah. someone who's spent far more time than I ever would have wanted to looking into scientific <laughs> studies and thinking about this stuff, I can assure you, yes, there was definitely supportive science that said lockdowns were a horrible idea. They were not actually backed by anything scientific. They were, they were eight. So there were two reasons we locked down for reference. Um, number one, a guy named Neil Ferguson at Imperial College oh. in the UK came out with this Jeez. model saying, oh, you know, a zillion people are going to die from COVID. What people don't necessarily know about Neil Ferguson is that he also predicted zillions of people were going to die from swine flu and um, and uh, SARS or H1N1, which are two other or bird flu. Anyway, he, he's come out with these crazy models. They've all been discredited. And for some reason... He came out with a model again for COVID and they go, we're going to listen to this guy and everyone's going to, this is the model we're all going to look at as the gold standard for what's going to happen. It was those China videos that went out with it and that's with part people two. just falling to the ground. And that's part two. There was uh, a, guy, a lawyer in the US named Michael Sanger has documented this in detail. There was a very sophisticated social media propaganda campaign orchestrated by China, the, the Chinese government, or it's very likely to have been orchestrated by Xi and the Chinese government. Because they were kind of um, compelling when they first came out. You remember those videos? It, like, but it's not hell? just the videos. It's a lot more than the videos, actually. There were bots that were basically constantly tagging and replying to politicians, say, you have to lock down, you have to fall, da, da, da. So between the Ferguson model getting oh, really? elevated- there, there is some documentation of that? Oh, I didn't know. Oh, oh yeah, I got it. Oh, wow. I, so okay. uh, Michael Sanger wrote a book called Snake Oil, Talk, talks all about it. <laughs> He's, oh, wow. he's documented everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's all. Jesse just gave me a look. I'm like, Tom, I'm surprised you don't know. <laughs> no, no, yeah, like I, I said, I've spent yeah. way too much time. Um, anyway, so going back to the, the barbecue note on the paper. Um, he had his day in court. He, he, I wrote the article in March, and I didn't find out until after I posted the article, but I was very happy to find out. Um, because of some of the funds he raised through a GoFundMe, which he didn't actually launch, some stranger when he got arrested launched it for him. He raised a lot of money. Um, he managed to bring in six subject matter ex experts to testify on his behalf. And it wasn't just, we're testifying that you shouldn't lock down restaurants. He basically said, we're going after every scientific basis for restrictions and how they are violating our charter rights. He, he went after the entire COVID narrative mm -hmm. and he had sort of the science to back it up. Um, you know, things like age stratification, right? Yes, COVID is dangerous, but to certain people, mostly if you're elderly, especially if you're infirm, right? If, you're, if you have multiple comorbidities, what have you. Yes, that's where the danger is. We should protect those people. But if you're under the age of 50 or 60 and you're in good health, you have very little to worry about. You don't have to stock up on toilet yeah, paper? Yeah, you don't have to stock no up on toilet, toilet paper. No toilet paper emergency? And that science was widely available at the time. But our talking heads didn't talk about it mm. for whatever reason. I don't, I, you know, I don't want to speculate on that. It doesn't even matter. They just completely ignored reality and they made everyone paranoid with fear. And so he was trying to get this court case brought forward where he was going to show all this evidence, get it on the record. Here, we can show you. The court case uh, had a hearing scheduled for uh, sometime in June, end of June, I guess. Of 2022? 20, 2021. 2021, okay. End of June 2021. And within five minutes of the hearing starting, the case got thrown out because of some procedural error. So meeting uh, some clerk or somebody? I don't there was know. Yeah, there were, the, you know. Like it's an administrative error? An administrative error. It's, I think... At the end of the day, Adamson has sort of said that, listen, the lawyer probably screwed up, which is atrocious because he was a constitutional lawyer. He's been through a lot of constitutional okay. challenges. So, you know, so, was, so it was kind of legit that it got, it was little, it's just unfortunate. It, it was very unfortunate and it cost, it caused a big setback in terms of time, in terms of you have to refile the challenge. He wasn't basically sure if he was going to do it again. Um, but he, did he? So the, the file, he has now, as of, I forget, you know, a month or two ago, actually refiled it. He has the funds to do all this? He doesn't have all the funds yet. I, He's raising money? He It's sort of stealthily raising. It's pretty quiet. He's not making a big show of it. Oh, okay. um, he's already raised some money. Um, I'm probably going to write something too. Okay. Try to, you know, as a follow-up to the piece that I wrote, because the story, in effect, was incomplete, right? It didn't have its ending. Yeah. 
um, I made my points in the story, which you guys know about, and I would encourage readers to go check out. It was a very uh, patriotic story, Canadian, you know, all about Canadian values. Um, we'll link to the article in the show notes of this episode, sure, so people can find it. Um, it's uh, I, I'm very very proud of that article. I think it's uh, some of the best writing I've ever done. Maybe even you know as good as the book oh, cool, for sure, man. if not better. But it's, about yeah, it. no, I I, I I was very meticulous in how I wrote it and what I wrote about and wanting to really, you know, I'm telling his story, but he's a, sort of the vessel for the story that I was telling as well. So it's, it, it, cool. it you know, it takes, it is book. a great read. I have to admit it is an amazing read. Not, I have to admit, I would like to state yeah. that it is a great read. So, uh, so where are we now then? So it's filed. He hasn't, okay. he hasn't uh, publicly come out and sort of said, Hey, I'm looking for money, but I'm probably going to write a follow-up piece to is there, further the story. And are in there my dates mind. set for these next years? Not yet. No, uh, why, why, pro- uh, probably in a few months. No, I, it, cause you I wait. Just, no, I don't think it's, it's happened yet. Basically it oh, just okay. hasn't, I, I, I don't know exactly yeah, how okay. the proceedings have gone. Uh, okay. I think he might need to get to a certain threshold. I feel like you need dollars. to be in the courtroom. Me? Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know about that. I don't know. I feel like I could see you in the courtroom there. Subject the matter room. expert of what? Of, yeah, of yeah. clown world. <laughs> yeah, just no, as an observer. Yeah, as, as an, an observer. observer. Oh, I did tune in by Zoom to his, the hearing where he got thrown out in five minutes. I was literally, I had a, an interview lined up with a, an independent reporter and she's like, you know, we were texting and watching online. She's like, okay, after it's over, we're going to set up, we're going to do our own interview so we can talk about it. And we were going to follow it for both days. And literally, again, it ended in five minutes and we're like, what the F so Jesse, who is Jesse Berger? How have you got to the point where you're writing a book on magic internet money, you're writing articles on barbecue guy. Let me say his name because I don't want to call him barbecue guy. Yeah, uh, Adam Skelly. Adam Skelly. You're writing all this stuff. You're on Twitter talking about the Bank of Canada raising rates. <laughs> like, who, who is Jesse Berger? How have you got to this place? Yeah. What, what, what's, what, what are you doing? It's a, a culmination of you know, all my experiences and education and, and, and self-education really, because there's, you know, I, I remember, I tell this story a lot of, you know, you learn in school, I studied economics in school and philosophy. So there's a little mm. bit of that. Philosophy mixed in everything good. I I'm sure whatever you lo- learned in economics, throw that in. The- yeah, no, but, but I, I would joke in my, the, my first interviews that I ever did when I was getting, you know, interviewing it for jobs after, uh, after undergrad that, oh yeah, you know, people would say, that's a weird combination, economics and philosophy. And I would, and I just had this canned answer where I'd go, well, what's the point of learning about markets if you don't think about how they actually work? And I'd always get this stunned look and it's like, you shouldn't be this stunned. Like, are you not thinking about how this all works? And then sure enough, I'm working at Royal Bank my first few years in, in life. And, you know, people would always come in. I, I worked at Young and Bloor at the corner of Young and Bloor. So it's okay. like this crazy cross it's the one of the busiest intersections in canada and you get the crazy cross section of just people from all walks of life who come through rich poor culture all kinds of cultural religious backgrounds what have you um and at the end of every month people come through with their welfare checks and you just cash the check no matter what like it doesn't you know normally you check a bank account yeah. hey are there funds because we got because that was a government one. check and i just remember seeing all the i don't know am i supposed to talk about this i just remember seeing um all these negative balanced accounts. It's like, doesn't matter. Just process, Gosh, process, exactly. process. And I was just like, what is this? Like, what, what am I seeing? What is happening? This makes no sense. Mm-hmm. You, negative balance accounts of these. Uh, of the city of Toronto. No, oh, no oh, of the city of Toronto. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. But you just cashed the check. The money came from it, somewhere. It's true. That's going back. Well, to that, that's banking for you, yeah. right? It's just, there's no, when, when you do banking or, you know, when we issue a loan, right? If you, if you get a mortgage, it's not like the bank takes half a million dollars that they have sitting around in their savings and they go, okay, we're taking it from here and now we're putting it in this other place so that you have the money for your house. It's just a credit on a ledger that they made up. I, I think if more Canadians understood that the, the the $20 bill that they might happen to have in their pocket, if anyone still has $20 bills in their pocket, if you trace that all the way back, it was a loan. That $20 bill yeah. is a loan. Like there's no money. So so I think people think like there's money in our current system. Everything we touch is a loan. Yeah, the $20 the, was loaned was out. Was created into, out of debt. Out of debt. Like, yeah. And that's the whole problem. It's not a capital-based money system. It's a debt-based money system. And it rewards system. the people who issue the debt, the bankers. Yeah. And it's why it's funny. For years, I had some close friends well, always kind of getting, trying to pull me into politics. And I'm like, listen, the politicians aren't the problem here. It's the bankers. Speaking, <laughs> it's the banking system. Speak, speaking of bankers and debt, did you guys see the BIS news yesterday? I did, the, yeah. The, the, about bank, the, the Bank for International Settlements. Yeah. So, so this is like the, quote, central bank of central banks. 
And apparently they just discovered, I forget if, I, I, you know. Is it 75? Yeah, it was what like was 65 or 80. I saw different numbers, but either way, 65, we'll, we'll say 65 trillion with a T dollars of worth of debt that they just quote the, the the Reuters headline was we had a blind spot they can't find they just we lost it we don't quite we don't understand know who got it. we don't know who has it we don't know where it is like okay if I lose sixty five dollars you know I'd be a little cheesed but like it happens maybe if you know you leave your wallet somewhere or something sixty five trillion like the entire GDP of the planet oh we just lost that debt yeah. we lost track of it. How is that like if that doesn't highlight just the absolute state of the Madness. world and the financial world? I don't know what does. It's kind of. Um, yeah. I and, and I mean, they knew there was a lot out there. Let's let's be clear. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 it's not like they didn't know there but was the fact money that coming out, out and saying like, oops, we lost this much. I mean, that's why I think we're closer and closer to the fall of Rome. Yeah. That so much more is now coming out that like that tipping point, like yeah. the inflection points almost here. And it's not it's not like conjecture. Like this was in Reuters. Like this is not just <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah. Like this isn't a conspiracy. Yeah, theory. exactly. This is like coming out from their own mouths. Yeah. Um, Jesse. So we made it through kind of two points. Not I, I was hoping to at least get into three points, but we didn't get what, to three. What, what's the other but one? The next one was the media. That's too long. Well, oh, I know. We can't even. <laughs> well, we'll bring you back, Jesse. I mean, uh Thank you. There's uh, lots of stuff to talk about. Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. yeah. I don't even know if you want to. Maybe that was. I just. just I, I don't I, think. I've, for my own emotional well-being, I think I. I need to. I'll have to step out if you. Oh, I have. On that I, path. I, yeah, I'm. I'm very opinionated. Yeah, I, I, I have I thoughts know. on that. So, uh, just to repeat, you are the author of Magic Internet Money, a book about Bitcoin. I love it because it's a very approachable entry point into the world of Bitcoin. And for those of you who don't know literally each page is a topic in and of itself. So you can like open the book and read almost any single page and get some value from it. So great job with the book. We're Thank big you. fans of you and the book. Where else can um, people find you? Twitter we will link to the article that you sure. mentioned earlier, but what else would you like to share? Yeah. So uh, the book is available at magicbitcoinbook.com. And uh, this summer I launched a feature with, uh, there's a, oh, sorry, I'll do a quick tangent if that's okay. Sure. A company called MASH. They're a Bitcoin company. It's actually based in Toronto and founded by a guy who I went to high school with of all things. So I actually knew him back in high school. Um, it's a, he's trying to embed lightning into the internet effectively, if you want to think about it that way. So right now on my website, you can effectively read my book. And as you're reading it, you can sort of stream me sats per page that you read. Huh. Um, wow, so it's sort of a like new, new value to value it's, model. Yeah. It, it's, we we're sort of experimenting with value to value, you know, we're maybe we'll tinker with what's a price per page. What's a hundred sats right now, probably pennies. So yeah, I think 50 it's 50 sats. Is it's like, like the equivalent of a dime per page, basically, is what I'm charging. It's yeah, it's it. a relatively low fee, but you can also just, if you're reading and you're enjoying and you're getting value from it, you can just click boom, I'm going to donate or boost yeah. and I'll give you an extra dollar huh. worth of Bitcoin. And so there's. And where do you do that? On It's on my website. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't yeah, know about you could, that. Yeah. You could just, so you don't have, so MASH is his company and you can, if you've never used Bitcoin, you can buy, you know, with your credit card, I think the minimum is like $15 worth of Bitcoin. But if you already have Lightning, you can send it to a MASH wallet and then you can stream as you read. So as these applications get easier, this goes to like our adoption yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, this is coming back a little evolve. bit to the adoption part. Uh, oh, that's very cool. Okay, so magicbitcoinbook.com. You can check that out there as well. And then we'll link to your Twitter. What is your Twitter? Yeah, the Twitter, Twitter handle, handle Jaber J. And on, and, right. and on the website as well, there's the audio book and the, the links to audio and the, the paperback and all that. Um, but yeah, Jaber J on Twitter. Thank you for doing this, Jesse. We appreciate oh, it. We drag you all the way in oh. from the city of Toronto yes. out to the suburbs of Oakville. So thank you. Appreciate this. My very pleasure, much. guys. Great seeing you guys. Hey, thanks for tuning in. You can find every new episode of the Your Life, Your Term show on all the major streaming platforms. So Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. And if you'd like to get free copies of some of the books that we've put together, like these right here, or some of the reports that we've put together, like these right here, you can find all of those at www.rockstarinnercircle.com. That's www.rockstarinnercircle.com. That's it for now. Until next time, your life, your terms.